because orchids for dummies, the people's channel, want you to know that I would not fertilize this orchid the same as I would fertilize that orchid. Now stay tuned if you want to know more. Welcome one and welcome all to the people's channel, darling. Because a lot of us are watering our orchids in, until the point that it looks like this. It's very sick and it's on its way out the door, okay? So we want to successfully water our orchids correctly. But predominantly, when you're growing in moss, you want to remember that moss is going to be nutrient retaining. So when it comes to your uh, moss or your phalaenopsis in moss, moss, you would only need to fertilize that with a weak dose, okay, once a month. Now, if you want to be slick and you want to try and you want to push it twice a month, if you are a new beginner like me, then you don't want to take any chances. A lot of lost of fouls, and I want to just start taking my time, going back, making sure what I did wrong. So, when it pertains to moss, use a weak dosage, no more than twice a month, okay? Especially when you cannot flush it. And a lot of people don't know that moss is hard to flush. Now, this is going to be a blend type of media. Meaning that it has moss and it has non-decomposable matter inside of it. Now, when you have that, foul pals, it, as you can see, it that all of this white substance is going to let me know that there is already a salt buildup, meaning that I have been overly fertilizing this orchid. And I have to remember that although it's not full of moss, such as um, your phalaenopsis over here, that moss plays, that a little bit of moss go a long way, baby. I'm trying to tell you, a little bit of moss go a long way. So I have to remember... Um, Maybe no more than three times a week. Very low dosage, okay? But when it pertains to um, bark or water culture, something that is going to wash out very quickly, then you want to use something that is a fast-acting um, urea-free-based um, fertilizer, such as Better Grow Orchid Plus. It's going to be a well-balanced fertilizer right here, your 2014-13, Okay? That is what you would use, and that is all that you would use. It's high in nitrogen. You don't need a bloom booster, such as this over here. You wouldn't need a bloom booster. We have found out that these are ineffective, okay? Meaning that they are very high in nitrogen, and everything else is low. So, foul pals, don't, do not fall for that the same way I did. So now that we have talked about the different fertilizers and the different type of ways that we would fertilize them in different types of pots, let's go ahead and give a little example, okay? Yes. Stay tuned. I don't want to learn about no nitrogen. I'm tired about urea. Just tell me what fertilizer to use because I'm seeing this person use that and I'm seeing that person use that. Okay, the so the first orchid on my list is going to be your sick phalaenopsis orchid that you are trying to encourage new root growth on. Now, in this instance, the orchid is very sickly, meaning that it cannot, it definitely cannot handle a lot of salts, okay? So as far as trying to give it nutrients, the only thing that I would suggest is foliar feeding, okay? Now, when you foliar feed, you do not want to mix this type of fertilizer into a solution that's just not what you want to do because the type of urea that it has, it says um, it contains no urea nitrogen. Now, if you aren't familiar with urea nitrogen, then I have a whole series on orchid fertilizing. I have a video explaining it in simple terms, what it is and how it can help us grow better. I will leave all of that information in this video or it's going to be in a playlist. What you would want to use to foliar feed your Phalaenopsis orchid is going to be your seaweed extract, okay? So, I would mix it into a gallon, a gallon of pure water because the Phalaenopsis orchid, she's still kind of sensitive. As you can see on her leaves, she's dehydrated, okay? Her leaves are very soft and, limp and flimsy. That lets me know that she's dehydrated. But because her leaves are not just falling off drastically, she's actually um, pulling the nutrients back in a way that is natural. And she's also using the nutrients from her flower stalk 
to help sustain her, I'm hoping that she will be able to bounce back. Okay, stay tuned. Now, Foul Pals, before we move on to the next plant, I simply wanted to give you some examples of a tip and trick that you would need to know when it pertains to trying to survive um, water culture. You see how this vase is cloudy, especially this substance down here. That is going to be your trace elements that's left over from your um, tap water, okay? Now, you see this over here, what makes this so incredible, the reason why people are running to the stores to get it is because it has those minor elements. A lot of fertilizers online, they do not have a complete list of these um, essential nutrients that your phalaenopsis might need. However, a lot of us are using distilled water or reverse osmosis water, which is going to be just the purest water that you can find, even rainwater. You want to remember that when you are using those, because your fertilizer, um, a regular fertilizer, those bottom two numbers are very low, you're going to deprive your um, phalaenopsis um, of this natural nutrient. So that is when you would need some seaweed extract, and that is when you would need some magnesium sulfate or something to that effect. But you would have to be precautionary on how to mix all of that up. Now, um, my uncle Rick L, he is very good with that. However, he is growing his orchids in a medium called lava rocks. And lava rocks is going to be very different um, than growing your orchids in bark and especially sphagnum moss. Now, foul pals, I hope I'm helping you. Let me know in those comment boxes if it's making sense to you. Now, stay tuned. Okay, foul pals. So, as it pertains to how you want to water your phalaenopsis that's in moss, especially in a glass container like this, you want to have something like this this came with my other orchid and it lets you know that they use three ounces of water instead of using those ice cubes that they used to instruct you to do now they give you a little shot glass baby and they want you to know to use warm water and to water responsibly so do not over fertilize your water so i'm going to use three ounces and i'm going to be very careful to pour it on pour it in and then i'm going to let it sit for about 30 seconds and then i'm going to hold it and pour it out just as so. I would show you, but I'm trying to keep these videos short like y'all see it now. Now I already said, honey, join my Facebook group, Foul Pals, honey. Somebody else can show you, okay? Now stay tuned. So my Phalaenopsis Blue, she is in her vegetative state, meaning that she is growing um, new roots and she just dropped a new leaf. You probably saw it in a previous video. She So the fertilizer that she would need, okay, because she's in her vegetative state, because she is growing new roots and she's getting ready to produce new leaves, what I would fertilize her with is I would get a drop of the seaweed extract. Okay, well, you want to see me put it together? You sure? Okay, well, stay tuned. <laughs> 